Hello everyone, it's Sam here at Model Chili Scalar Models, and here I have Sprue Kit's Halo Master Chief Figure Kit. But as you can tell from the thumbnail, I won't be doing the Master Chief, I'll be doing my own custom Spartan, based on the colour scheme that I had uh, back in the Halo 3 days when I used to play a lot of multiplayer. Um, I'll put up some screenshots that I've still got after all these years, but I spent a lot of time and I had a lot of fun playing online in Halo 3. Uh, probably my favourite mode was, I think it was called Oddball, where you'd just pick up the skull and uh, everyone else would try and take it from you. And I usually did pretty well in that mode, but there was also a lot of Deathmatch and Lone Wolf and all sorts of other game modes that I had way too much fun with. Um, technically this figure kit is from, oh man this is really going to test my knowledge, Halo 4 or Halo 5, I think it's Halo 4. So this isn't going to be exactly the same as the Halo 3 multiplayer armour. But um, you could have different types of armor on the in the online mode, so it kind of goes with the theme of having different types of armor in the color scheme that I had way back in 2007, 2008. And um, I've actually had a for a while this uh, action figure that was missing a shoulder pad that I bought one of the um, multiplayer action figures, which was all white, and I just added my own custom yellow highlights. Which is really poorly painted now that I look at it. It's really thick and full of brush strokes, but this is what I'll be uh, making the figure look like. So, first of first off, let's uh, have a look inside the box. All right, so we've got uh, several bags, an instruction leaflet. Uh, some of the Under Armour pieces there, some stickers, and the stand and base, some of the Over Armour pieces. Now this is good that they're all separated because I can just paint all of these white separately from the Under Armour. And some joint pieces and the orange plastic visor. Okay, so the plan is to first remove and clean up all of the green armour pieces and then paint those separately and then move on to constructing the under armour. Um, but this needs a lot of the grey and the green pieces together. So I'm going to need to paint all of the green pieces first and then uh, construct it very similar to how I've constructed the Bandai uh, Star Wars figures in the past, especially the Stormtroopers. It's going to be a very similar process to how I customised a lot of those. So it's going to be fairly straightforward, but I'll uh, make sure to include all of the steps necessary so you can follow along. Now what I'm using here is just my usual Tamiya pointed side cutters. Now the pointed just means it has a uh, an extra fine point at the end, just to make it a bit easier to get into um, hard to reach angles and recessed areas. And these stay sharp for a, a really long time, so they can be quite expensive, the, the Tamiya stuff, but uh, it's worth the money, because they'll last you a good few years. Alright, so I've cleaned up all of the separate pieces, the green armour there, and I've also decided to paint the grey under armour. Just because I want it a little bit darker than this, maybe a dark grey or black even. And it'll, it'll also help remove the plasticky look from these parts. But uh, the first step is to apply a primer to all of these pieces. And for that I'm using Tamiya's Surface Primer from a spray can. And that does two jobs. The first, it uh, helps the acrylic paint stick to the plastic much better than just spraying paint straight onto these parts. And also because I'm going to be painting these white or a very light grey, It'll be much better to paint that over a light grey base rather than straight onto green, which might take a few layers of white to cover to cover that dark colour up. And so I'll lay all of these out on a board and spray them all outside where there's a bit more ventilation, and then I'll be back to uh, put on the base coat. All right, so now it's time to apply the base coat, and for that I'm using Vallejo Model Air seven one 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 nine white grey.
All right, so with the base coat down, what I'm going to do now is do some highlights just using plain white. And I'm going to be uh, putting the airbrush down to a lower pressure just because I want it quite fine and uh, quite light on certain uh, surfaces. Now moving on to the Under Armour pieces, I'm using Vallejo's Model Air 71055 Black Grey. And now to paint on the gold yellowy parts, I've got this really nice yellow ochre, which is a Vallejo Model Air 71033. Now that the painting's done, I'm going to seal it all in with a layer of Tamiya's TS13 Clear. Alright, so I've just used the uh, sticker that came with the kit to provide this reflective backing to the visor. And I don't really like it. You can see there's a bit of creasing and it just kind of looks a bit rough around the edges. So although it provides a good reflective surface, I think I'd prefer to just, just paint it silver myself on the uh, plastic.
Okay, so attaching one of the back weapon holster uh, thingies has revealed that there's quite a lot of exposed green plastic on the other side, which I uh, missed in painting, which was going to be inevitable because I haven't built one of these before, so I don't really know what's going to be exposed and what isn't. So what I'm just going to do is just brush on the white grey along these surfaces and hopefully it'll, it'll be um, hidden enough so it won't look too bad but at least it'll cover up the dark green that's showing through. All right, so there he is next to his action figure counterpart. And as you can see, he's just about twice as tall as the action figure. And he comes in at about just under nine inches tall. So he's quite a good size. I was kind of expecting more of a 10 to 12 inch scale um, from the size of the kit. It doesn't actually say on the box what scale he is. So I'm really not sure um, what that is since Spartans are supposed to be about seven foot or something. That kind of throws off my scale estimation a little bit but yeah overall quite happy with it and pretty happy with how it came together all of the white pieces are that are supposed to be white have come out white um, and all of the dark under armor bits are mostly there with the exception of just this bit at the ankle looks like they've um, molded that in with the under armor texture but they molded it in green so I just painted it all white so I might just have to go in with a bit of brush painting and cover that up and there's a little bit more of the green plastic showing through with some of the exposed pieces behind the plastic. So again, just a bit of brush painting, I'll touch those up with the white grey. But I think I've done a pretty good job of covering up all the green overall. 
And so, as you can see on the action figure, um, he does have these yellow stripes around the thigh and the bicep. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to attempt the same thing on this. The thigh probably could be quite easy to mask, but the, th the bicep is quite a lot of um, really difficult shaping around there to get a good mask in. I might see if I've got some speed decals that I could use, but yeah, I haven't quite made his mind up about whether or not to do those yet. I also noticed he's got some um, dark grey toe caps, so I might have to just look at some more reference pictures and see if that needs the same thing on this uh, mark of armour. I'm not sure yet. But yeah, but once I've uh, done those touch-up paint jobs, I'll uh, get on to the weathering. Alright, so just before I start the weathering, I'm going to apply some decals, which have been salvaged from my speed decal collection, which I've got quite a big stack of now. And specifically the 1 to 144 scale Millennium Falcon, all of the panels that I ended up painting. Um, all these spare decals. No, actually, I didn't paint them. I used the stickers, didn't I? Um, there was a sticker sheet and a water slide decal sheet, and I ended up using most of the stickers for that kit. So I've got all these spare decals, and I've noticed that the yellow panels are pretty close and match to the yellow that I've used on the uh, Spartan. So I'm going to use those two just as a a few little blocks of colour just around the armour just to break it up a little bit and then some of these light grey panels as well I'm just going to stick around just to help break up this uh, huge big slab of white white grey that I've got going Alright, so now that the decals have set, I've uh, mixed up a bit of paint, um, just the base colour, two parts of that to one part of a slightly darker grey, 71120 dark ghost grey, just to give a sort of a darker shade to the base coat. And I'm just going to lightly brush on um, some panels around all of the white armour, just to break up the uh, the big white block of colour, just a little bit. Um, it's going to be quite rough and quick at the moment because I'm going to do another step once this has been dried which will ultimately add to the the weathering um, it's going to be it's going to give it a bit of a sort of a grimy um, worn look but it'll become more clear once this is dried and I move on to the next step but for now I'm just going to just roughly brush on some panels with the mix. So now the next step is just to basically get a bit of airbrush thinner on the end of a cotton bud. And then just remove most of the paint. And just leave a little bit around the edges in sort of a broken up pattern. And so there you can see a bit of a uh, indication that there's kind of wear and tear around the edges of this panel. It's similar to doing a wash, but um, it's a bit lighter than any of the washes I've got. I didn't want to go too dark. And it just adds a little bit of flavour to the weathering. So I just don't want the armour to look too clean and polished. This guy's seen a bit of action. And if you're wondering how I'm able to so easily wipe this away without affecting the paint underneath, it's just because of that uh, layer of Tamiya Clear that I put on before the weathering, which is a, um, a non-water-based paint, so the acrylic thinner doesn't affect that clear layer, so I can wipe away as much as I want and it won't touch the white-grey layer underneath. And the next step is just a basic wash. 
and for that I'm using Vallejo's Model Wash Grey. And that's just applied to all of the recessed areas, just to help bring out a bit of definition. And again, once this is dry, I'm going to be wiping most of it from the flat surfaces away. Alright, so the wash has set, and as you can see it's uh, gone into a lot of the recessed areas, but there's still a few places that look a bit messy, where the wash has um, pulled and kind of dried in, in place. So, as the same step as before, I've just got some uh, acrylic thinner, and I'm just going to wipe away the bits that I don't want. can be a bit of a tedious task. Um, you can just apply the wash into certain areas that you want, but I kind of like doing it in this sort of overall random pattern, because I don't want it to be too uniform or too clean. And it also lets me move around some of the wash as I'm wiping it. Alright, so the next step is to start applying some scuff marks and for that I've just got basic Vallejo black just on the end of a thin brush and I'm just going to go around and just add some random black lines where there's been scuffing and contact Now I'm just going to do a little bit of chipping on the painted shoulders, just with a bit of um, the base coat on the end of a brush. And the box art shows quite a bit of um, silver chipping around the Master Chief in certain areas. So it sort of indicates that the, um, the bare metal under the paint is a kind of a silvery uh, colour. So I'm just going to do the same on um, this. If it was dark green I probably would have used just aluminium or silver. But because this is a light white colour I'm going to go for a bit, a bit of a darker grey, well a darker silver. And that's just Vallejo's um, gunmetal, 71072. And I'm just going to go lightly around the edges where it gets the most wear and tear and just add just a little bit of chipping.
And for the last step of the weathering, I've just painted this large gash in the gunmetal, and now I'm just filling it in with the grey wash. And then I can move on to the weapons. Alright, so for the weapons, I'm just going to paint them with basic uh, Vallejo Model A Black. Now I'm going to do a top coat of Vallejo Gunmetal 71072. And now using Vallejo's black model wash, I'm just going to uh, brush paint on and highlight um, certain sections of this of these weapons just to break up the colour a little bit. Now I'm just going to paint on a few of the uh, little details like some of the lights and uh, ammo counter. So there's a few stickers that I could use for the weapons. Uh, we've got ammo counters, which I didn't realise. Um, some little lights for the scope, which I've painted in anyway. And some yellow markings for the battle rifle. I don't think I'll put those on because they're kind of thick and look a bit too much like stickers. So I'm going to leave those off. But these are little uh, name plates I might stick on. And I'll leave off these markings as well. Okay, well I've just tried out that sticker for the underside of this rifle and I think it looks alright actually. It's not too thick and it fits down quite nicely so I might end up keeping that. It goes nicely with the yellow theme of the figure as well so yeah, I'm going to keep that on. 
Now I'm just attaching his uh, pistol holsters, which go this way, I think. I've not painted these, mainly because they're going to have quite a bit of plastic rubbing, rubbing against them, so the paint will only just chip off anyway. Alright, so now it's time for the final flat coat, which is going to be Vallejo's Matte Varnish 70520, and that'll just be applied with the airbrush. And uh, I'll pull apart the figure just so I can make sure I get the matte varnish into all of the areas of the Under Armour. And I'll also either mask or pull off the visor just because I want that to remain nice and shiny. And uh, that will be done. And there he is, done and dusted. It's always a nice feeling to sit back and look upon a kit that you've just finished in all its glory. Um, so hopefully you guys have uh, had fun watching and I hope you like the final result. It's uh, been a lot of fun building this kit, uh, put, painting all of the parts and putting them together. The kit went together really well. It uh, pretty much matches anything that Bandai uh, have done with their figure kits. It's very similar to all of those Star Wars figure kits. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the deal is with sprue kits, but there is a, the Bandai logo on the box, so as far as I'm concerned it's a Bandai kit uh, with the usual quality and precision that you'd come to expect from Bandai, so if, ever, if you've ever thought about getting one of these kits then I highly recommend it, especially if you're a Halo fan. And then you've got the option to do Master Chief or do one in your own colours. But uh, having said that, the, there is one thing to be aware of if you intend to paint all of the parts and and that is that he's doesn't really end up as much of an action figure i'm really reluctant to put him in any different poses just because of all the parts rubbing against each other and causing chipping and wearing um, he's already started to chip along some of the shoulder and hip joints so that's just the nature of having painted all of the parts he uh he's pretty much just stuck as a static model kit at this point but, you know, I still think it looks really cool and it was definitely worth it. You know, I'm really happy with how it came out. Uh, the weathering and the paint job. And especially the weapons. I ended up going for a semi-gloss coat on the weapons, just to make them a bit more shiny and a bit more metallic. And to the contrast of the gunmetal and the black and the little highlights, I think came out really well. So, really happy with how they came out. And as always, I look forward to any and all feedback regarding the overall result. I read all of the comments and try to reply to every single one. Sometimes I forget or it does take me a week or two to reply, but usually I uh, I do try to reply to all comments, uh, both positive and negative. So feel free to give your honest feedback. And if you've got any specific questions about any of the paints or the techniques that I've used, feel free to ask. The uh, total footage that I, that I recorded was well over an hour long, so I've had to do a lot of editing to cut it down to around about half an hour. So hopefully I've not missed out anything that you've really wanted to see. I tried to keep in all of the major steps involved with building and painting. But again, if you've got any questions, then uh, just feel free to ask. And that wraps up this build of the Sprue Kits, Bandai, Bandai Sprue Kits, whatever it is. Uh, Master Chief, Halo, you, you know the drill. Anyway, again, I hope, I hope you've had fun watching and I hope to see you in the next video. So until then, Thanks for watching and take care.